So let's start our to-do app by creating a new project here. And we're just gonna call it to-do. Beautiful, create blank, and we're brought to this project setup page. Now we're not gonna do anything here, but don't worry, you still have access to all of these options in your settings, and I'll show you that in a second. So we're just gonna click off setup Firebase because we'll do that later and start building. Now, all of those options are still available to you. They're down here in your options, but let's go back to our canvas right here and talk about what we're gonna do in this video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Figma file so that it's ready for importing the design system into Flutterflow, and then we're gonna import it. But why? Like, why do we need to mess around with a design system? Why don't we just start building right here? Well, Flutterflow is designed to build scalable and maintainable apps, and designing with a design system is a central part of that. Now, why is that? Well, let me show you. If you're not using a design system, and let's say we've just got some text right here, then you come down and you manually change all of the properties here. So the font weight and the font size. And then if you have another text widget that has those same styles, you have to go through and set all those again manually. But if you have your design system and you have your typography already set up, you can just come down to this menu right here and select whichever text style it is. So there's the title large, and here I come to my title large. And this makes it not only faster to build, but more maintainable. So you don't have to remember all these values or go back to them. They're already all saved. Now, where is this design system? Well, that's down here. Here is where we'll import our Figma theme and we've got other options for styling our app. Here's our colors, our typography and icons that we'll use in our app and theme widgets. And these are base styles for widgets that you'll use. So for instance, the style of a button or a container. So once you have all of these set up here, then when you reference them in your app, you're just referencing your design system. This also means when you change your design system, anywhere where those things are bound in the app will also change and you don't have to go through those and change each individual one. Okay, great. Let's delete these two right here and then jump into our Figma file to see how to set it up. So here's our Figma file with all the pages that we're gonna build, and this file is available to you in the link below in the description. Now, when we import our theme from Figma, we're importing two main things. Our typography, so that's all the fonts we're using and their weights and styles, and our colors. But we have to set them up correctly because Flutterflow is not gonna import just every font and every color you used in your projects, in your project. So which ones will it import? Well, if you just click off here, you can see these local styles. These are what will be imported. So all of these text styles and all of these color styles. So let me show you how to get these in here. Now, I haven't added this blue yet, so let's do that. So I'm gonna select this blue right here and let's click on it and come into libraries and press plus. And you wanna click on style, give it a name, blue, and create style. Then when you click off on the canvas here, you can see it's in our color style, so it will be imported. Great, let's do these text styles. Now to understand your typography, let's go jump into Flutterflow and see how the type is set up there because then it'll make more sense about what we have to do here. So let's come down to our theme settings and to this third option for typography and icons. And you can see these are the styles that you have available to you. So display, small, medium, and large, and then headline, title, label, and body. So five different groups of three different weights. Now, these names don't mean anything. They're just helpful guides. So you can use these styles for any font size or weight or color or family here. And they don't have to go from large to small. You can use them however you want. These are the styles that Google's material design uses. So they're a helpful guide when you're setting up your design system. So what's gonna happen is when we import our textiles from Figma, 
we will map them or connect each one of our styles in Figma to one of these styles here. So I have a trick that helps me with this. I've got a frame here with typography that has all of those styles that we're gonna map to in Flutterflow. And what you're gonna do is go through your design and define styles for each one of the type choices in your app. So I haven't set the type choice for this little hint text right here. So let's set that. So I have all the type settings that I want, this font called enter, it's 18 and regular weight. And so then I can come in here to text and select that, go to textiles and click plus, give it a name. And here I can see all the styles I have set up already. And I can see that I don't have a label large yet. So I'll call it label large create style and so when I click off here I can see I've got this label large so I use this text to define that label large but now I can apply that to the other ones so let's come in here and set label large and do it to all the rest of these now one helpful tip for keeping track of which styles you've defined is whenever you define one you can come over here and apply it to this type legend you have so that's the label large I'm gonna set it here and I'm gonna search for a label large and apply it. I also like to move it in a little bit like this or do some other visual indicator to say, I've used this already, so these are the other ones that I have available to me. So then, by the time you're done, when you select any text, you should see that it has a style bound to it. Now, why do we need to do it this way? Well, when we're designing our app, we probably won't remember which style should be applied to it. So we can come back to our Figma file. Let's say we were designing this profile page and say, what is that style called that we defined? And we select it here and we can say, okay, we're using headline large for that and then go to apply it. Now, keep in mind that you don't have to use all of these. You could use just a few and that's totally fine. Your design system is just sitting there waiting to be used and if it isn't, nothing happens. Okay, once you've defined all of your type styles and your colors, you are ready to import this into your Flutterflow project. And to do that, we're gonna need two things. The URL of this project, that's just the URL of this page, and a personal access token. So first, let's grab this URL. Here's mine, and jump over to Flutterflow, and come into this design system right here, and click this import Figma theme, and drop in that URL. And then let's grab this token right here. To do that, you can come into here and go back to your files, come into your name up at the top left here and select settings, scroll down to this personal access token and generate a new token. The name doesn't matter, so we're gonna call it to do. And you normally only need this once, so 30 days is fine. Generate token, click on this to copy. You're not gonna see this again, so just make sure you've got it. And we can jump into Flutterflow. Let's paste in that token and import Figma theme. Next, it's gonna walk us through what is actually imported. So first we import our colors, that's beautiful. And now we have to map our colors. Well, what does that mean? Well, Flutterflow has some default color categories set up. So things like your primary, secondary, and tertiary brand colors, background colors, text colors, accent colors. And just like with a the type, these don't bind you in any way. You can use these for whatever you want. They're just helpful categories that many apps need. And what we do here is we map the colors we're importing from Figma to these colors here. So our primary color is going to be that green color. Our secondary one is going to be that blue. And our primary background color is going to be this background color. And we can just accept all the rest of the defaults. Now, if your app has a dark theme, you can come in here and set up those colors. Our app doesn't, so we're just going to save and continue. Next, we're gonna do the same process for our type. So here's all the type we're importing. And so let's import and continue. Now, because we used the same naming convention here, it's easy to map these values. So display large should be display large. And as you can see, we're not using any of those display ones. So we can just skip over them. So you wanna just go through and map all of these values. So headline large and through the rest of these. I won't bore you with this. 
Beautiful, save and finish. There we go, we've imported our theme. And you can check it by coming into colors here and see that we've got those. We can just turn off our dark mode right here and come into our typography right here. And you can see that we've got all of those set. Now, one additional thing I'm gonna do here is set our primary and secondary font family. Why am I gonna do that? Well, I'm only using these styles right here, but in case I wanna use an additional one, it will map to the correct font family. So I'm gonna just come in here and search for enter and set that for both. Great, so now if I use a display, the primary font family will be correct. And the last thing we need to do is apply the correct colors to our different type styles. So we've imported the colors and the type font and weights, but now we need to set the colors. So I know from both my label medium and large, I'm gonna take my primary black and just bump it back to 30%. Beautiful, and that's it. All right, so let's take a look at how this works in the actual app. So when we come back here, we see something's changed already, and it's this app bar right here because now our primary color has changed and that was bound to our primary color. So also, if we add a text widget in here, now we have all of our type styles in here and we can just apply them like that. Beautiful. And that's how to set up your Figma file for importing into Flutterflow's design system.